how cool is it to see, you know, one of your former players, and I know she she played in the previous one, but now all of a sudden, here she is, Denisha Blackwood, Jamaica's advanced. They knock Brazil out. She's had some really good games. Got to be satisfied as a coach and also as, you know, for UWF soccer. It's, it's uh, like every player, it's a long story how we recruited that player. And so Denisha was a long story as well. Um, you know, we've always had great connections in, in the islands. Like I said, just for some reason, I, I've been able to go down and, and see people firsthand. I can't go by video and trust that the video is good enough. And so, you know, recruiting Denisha started back like in 2013 when she was young. She didn't even know we'd be recruiting her. But we took our college team on a cruise and, and stopped off on a cruise ship, stopped off in Cayman Islands. And so the Cayman Island Federation picked us up took us to the field. We played the Cayman Islands women's national team. And then they took us to Stingray City. Then we got back on the cruise ship. The next day we woke up in Jamaica and we went to go play Jamaica's women's national team. The reggae girls picked us up. So UWF is playing against the women's national team of Jamaica all the way back in 2013. And Denisha wasn't ready to come out of high school, but we met some of her teammates. One happened to be Bunny Shaw. Bunny Shaw was one that their captain of Jamaica that we recruited for the University of West Florida. No one knew about Bunny Shaw. We couldn't get her in to UWF at the time, so we found her at junior college, East Florida State in, in Brevard, Florida. And so we helped her get there to, to uh, Brevard at junior college, hoping that one day we'd get back Bunny. You know, but once people saw Bunny play, then all the big D ones came and everything like that. But that didn't deter us from getting players, you know, like Chantel Thompson and Tanisha Blackwood. And so uh, 2015, I want to say, I went back down to Jamaica and was able to connect with locals. You just can't go to Jamaica and just try to find somebody. You have to have connections. So my connections picked me up. Our first stop happened to be Bob Marley's birthplace and house. So we had to go to Nine Mile, it was called actually. And we stopped by and I've got a picture of where he used to sit on his his thinking rock and write songs uh, there. And then I worked my way to go see Denisha Blackwood and a couple other players train a couple of times at their training center. So just the connections over the years. And we saw uh, Denisha play, liked her, couldn't get her into UWF at the time. So we had her work out with Navarro uh, Junior College in Texas. And so she went there, but we kept track track on her. Uh, Alicia Wilson, our old assistant who used to captain Jamaica, was now the head coach at Navarro. So it worked nicely to then try to get Tanisha. But it wasn't a done deal. People recognized Tanisha coming out, a lot of D1s. So we had to drive to Corsicana, Texas, two times while she was there. One time in a Prius, myself and Coach Smith are driving through Texas in a Prius with big trucks all around, like me, me, you know. And, and so... Uh, the things that coaches have to do for recruiting. Everyone just sees Denisha Blackwood, graduate, and I always say that, graduate of UWF, not just participated, but we, we made sure she graduated when she was away on national team duty sometimes. But we went to Texas a couple of times to watch her play and everything like that. And eventually we were able to get her to come across and, and play for us over at UWF. And uh, what I liked about Denisha, tenacious on the field, tenacious in, uh, in the classroom as well. Uh, Denisha was well-rounded, well-focused, well uh, well-spoken. Well and you can get on YouTube and find a lot. They, they have been interviewing her coming into the World Cup. And there's some great, great articles about team and everything. And it's not my voice coming across to hers because it's hers. But there's, there's, there's some familiar statements and things like that. She might not <laughs> say that, but we've been texting back and forth a little bit. I don't want to distract her uh, right now, but she's super excited. Um, but yeah, it, it's a long story to, to get a player to come to your university and then to make sure they do well uh, academically. And Denisha was always dedicated both on the field you know, but off the field as well. She's she's very driven. She's a very driven youngster and super excited that she was player of the match against France. They shut France down and Denisha had a really, really good game. And we're watching here from the Cayman Islands uh, with our team and supporting her, you know, our, our, our teammate and everything like that. So it, it's a cool story, but the story includes Bunny Shaw and many others from from other countries that that we've 
you know, we've been able to stay connected with through UWF soccer. And it's unique. We're down here in the Cayman Islands and people are coming up. Coach Barr, UWF. I mean, we have so many friends. Tomorrow morning, we're going to go out to Stingray City and they're picking us up at our hotel. We're not even having to drive to the boat. The boat's coming to us. And so just the relationships, you know, football's about relationships. And we've been able to develop some good ones over the years. Did I just see a chicken fly behind you? Yeah, you did. We, we, we are in the Cayman Islands. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> Make sure that makes it. You know, you can oh, edit yeah. the heck out of this. Record everything. Take what you need. And the chicken flying in the background, you definitely got. Our players are just, they're, they're in awe. But but I've been here many times. I've been to Jamaica. I've been to St. Lucia and Antigua and Puerto Rico and, and Costa Rica. CONCACAF, I've met the heads of CONCACAF before. And Bill Elliott will tell you the story. One time we were meeting Jack Warner, who's, who's they're trying to extradite him to the U.S. for bribery charges. But Bill and I met Jack, and I had to wear my dress sandals on the day. You know, I made sure I didn't just wear my regular sandals. But in, I, I went in Trinidad, and I dressed up. I had I had khaki slacks on and my nice dress sandals to, to meet the head of CONCACAF. So it, it's it's been a great journey over the years. And Denise is just the current story right now. You mentioned the France game. I watched some of that game, watched a little bit of the, the matchup with Brazil. I mean, obviously, they shut Brazil out and, you know, the nil-nil draw. I mean, uh, she's doing fantastic things. She plays professionally overseas. I mean, but what a great, you know, for your current players and, and players that yep. you've had the last couple of years to point to and say that's that's where it can end up. And it's not only been Denisha. Like I said, we've had probably 30 kids over our, our 20-something years here that have signed contracts to go play pro. And Denisha, again, is just one of them right now. Uh, Danny Cruz just barely missed out on the uh, uh, Costa Rican women's national team right now. She was a long, stead person, but she's been playing in Spain and everywhere. Um, PD. Uh, Sashana Campbell, one on one. She's over as an alternate for Jamaica right now. She was a captain for Jamaica the last few years. Um, uh, you know, Jody Jody Ann Robinson played for the Canadian full women's national time in in China when they went to when the World Cup was in China in 1990s. You know, late 90s. But she played in a women's World Cup and then played for us at, at UWF. And so the list goes on and on. And then you talk about youth internationals that played in World Cups. Charlene and our goalkeeper Stefani Pereira is from Mexico. We went and played in the U20 World Cup in Papua New Guinea. So our, our players, when they come to, to West Florida, uh, have have had you know they they've been cultured with with world football, you know, and so it, it it's it's pretty unique. But then after they graduate, like I said, no less than thirty have gone on to play in France, and Spain, and Iceland, and Norway. In Mexico, and again, Estefani Barrera plays for Pachuca now in Mexico. So these players get the opportunity. People always say, oh, you got to go to this big school to go pro. You got to go to a quality school so you improve. And that happened to be West Florida over the years. Well, Coach, enjoy the islands. Uh, you know, I guess we can root for Jamaica if the U.S. isn't playing. And then you guys will be playing before too long. It's already August. You guys will be playing before yeah, you know yeah, we check back in. Preseason starts August 14th, you know, and so we've been able to get a, a jump on it. And this is a whole story in itself at some point. Uh, the stories that we've done, we've been down here four or five days and, and we got about three or four more days left. And, and um, yeah, so I, I finally saw the email today. <laughs> I've been on island time, you know, we've been training and doing some good things, but it's uh, the, the players are bonding. We, we've now, so as coaches, you have to adapt. And, and we were big in CONCACAF and the islands, but a lot of the big schools are now sending people down there and, and doing all that they can. Uh, so now we've been doing well in the portal, you know, like football and others, we've been able to do well. And so we've got players now from Ohio State, Kansas University, Vanderbilt in our program that are, that are, that are feeling relieved and refreshed to play great soccer, but in a, in a, a, a school that treats them as an individual first and not just a, just a number. And so those stories are, are great. And so, you know, National Player of the Year last year, Blair Cowan um, graduated. Um, and now we've got other new players coming in and we'll, we'll see, have to see how they do. But, but the quality, is, is, we've got some good quality this upcoming year.